One of our favorite sponsors is back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Z- extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's- and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're given the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo, promo code. code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. No simple road. Yeah, here we go. back we we're did back. it we're here and and we're, we're in your ear Welcome. and you know what we're brought to you by melt mushrooms plural chocolates mm-hmm. premium chocolates look here's the thing we don't pick losers here at no simple road we no. we only associate ourselves with the finest the finest. The finest. Yeah. We're bougie, bougie wooks yeah. over here. <laughs> Do you like luxury? <laughs> That's right. And and here's the thing. There's a lot of choices for mushroom chocolates out there. All right. I get it. And we would only associate ourselves with a premium brand. If you want bullshit, go ahead and get, get it somewhere else. But if you want the best of the best, go follow at Melt Mushrooms on Instagram. M-E-L-T. Shoot them a DM. Tell them No Simple Road sent you and you're going to get $20 off your first bar. They're going to send you their menu and you can pick from their 10 different flavors and they grow all the mushrooms themselves. This is their secret proprietary mushroom blend. There's four grams of this in each bar and you can just take a little piece and microdose or you could take the whole fucking thing and, mm. and have fun. And some of the flavors, peanut butter, dark chocolate. Then they've got the classic dark chocolate. They've got mint crunch dark chocolate Ooh. and vegan right and then well, then they have special collabs like that coffee one sold out real quick yeah, and now, now they're asking people's opinions of who they should collab with next as far as a coffee company to make more coffee ones oh shit dark matter Ooh, mm, cafe mom cafe mom uh so <laughs> here's the thing they're amazing And they're so amazing that they decided that they wanted to start sponsoring the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind exclusively. So this episode of the Rewind is brought to you exclusively by our family over at Melt Premium Mushroom Chocolates. Follow them them at Melt Mushrooms, plural, on Instagram. And uh, yeah, microdose your way into a happier future or macrodose your way into space. I don't care. Just go get yourself some. Yeah, and it's That's worth right. it. Even if you even if you already have a mushroom chocolate, like get one with the twenty dollars off your first order and compare it. I yeah. bet you'll be blown away. That's a great idea. That's a great idea, Apple. Wow, you're so smart. I mean, that sometimes smart. when it comes to things, it's <laughs> when it comes to things and such. Look, man, I'm excited. I feel 
hopeful. I feel excited. I feel accomplishment in my life right now. That's a great feeling. And, and why is that? Feeling. Pray tell. The, a, a myriad of reasons. All right, start oh, with one. Myriad. Well, okay. Uh, Wednesday, today's Monday. So Wednesday, we are appearing live at Ophelia's Electric Soapbox in Denver, Colorado with Andy Frasco's World Saving Podcast. Woo! Our guest is going to be Chris, none other than Chris Pandolfi. Chris Pandolfi of Inside the Musician's Brain podcast. And the infamous String Dusters. And Andy is going to have comedian Todd Glass with him. And uh, a, a slew of other. Uh, Sean Eccles is going to be yeah. there doing parody songs, which I'm super stoked what? about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Sean is and, dope. Uh, Andy has a super secret guest that is... Uh, in the music business. That's, that's all that we could say. Um, so it is a podcast corneocopia on, on Wednesday at 7.30 at Ophelia's. Tickets are available right now. Still, I think you can get them. It has not sold out yet. It's going to. So go it, get it your tickets. It will sell, sell out before the date because there's no, only 150 tickets. So. At nosimpleroad.com or you can go to Ophelia's.com. If you are not in one of the cities that, uh, in one of the cities, if, if you're, you're not, not in Denver, Denver you, you, can, uh, you can watch the stream for free at volume.com. Our friend, our new friends. Yeah, there are new friends. At volume.com are so wonderfully hosting a free live stream for all of you that can't be with us in the flesh there in Denver. So on Wednesday, you just go to volume.com and click on the stream and you can hang out with us. There'll even be a chat room that you can go into and interact with us. We're going to pick some random questions or comments and read them on stage and you'll be able to interact with us through the magic, the wizardry, the the sorcery of the internet, we will connect. Okay. How awesome is it? Like when you were little, if you could like, what up, say whatever you like, okay, I'm going to just jeopardy. If you could like talk to Alex Trebek while he's on jeopardy. But if I was a kid, I wouldn't want to talk to Alex okay, Trebek. Okay. Sesame street. Nerdy. What if you could like talk to Elmo and oh, be like, shit. Oh, Hey Elmo, what's your favorite bathtub toy? And he'd be like, my baby bathtub toy. <laughs> yeah, like th- what, what's happening now and what we're able to do with the internet and live streaming is so incredible is that you can actually participate with the people that you're enjoying watching. Technology truly is yeah. indistinguishable from magic. So that's again, volume.com. If yeah. you can't be there, just, Check us out on volume. If you can't be there, you can still be there. Yep. Through the magic of volume. Can't be there in person. That's you can dope. be there in spirit. Everybody's going to all watch us. <sighs> I won't pick okay. my nose so, for this. So that's that's one reason. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Um, Numero dos. The other reason is. Your hat? Six years ago. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> six years ago, we started No Simple Road. Or I started No Simple Road. Yes. Six years ago. By just sitting on the porch with a microphone by myself, terrified to talk into a mic. And now we're sitting in the studio that is dedicated 100% to no simple road. And we have musicians coming to the house Mm. to do interviews live with us here. And it was re impressed on me the other day when Haley Johnson came to the house, how, far we've come and like i i stepped out of myself for a moment and was looking at everything that we have going on like this thing at ophelia's and and um Haley was here and we had just done christian we had just done christian lopez and and we're going to cascade equinox festival and doing a live podcast and just all the stuff and i was like holy shit like if I could go back and tell 2017 Aaron on the porch, like, Hey man, in a few years, this is what's going to be going. I wouldn't have believed me. It, that it is kind of hard to believe when you add up all of the things we've have done and, and have also to come. It's hard to think about. It, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and there's other stuff in the works too, that like, I can't talk about just yet, but, possibilities and and things are are happening for for no simple road like beyond what i even thought and and it's funny uh, how do i talk about this i had a phone call with somebody the other day regarding no simple road and some of the future plans of it and 
when I hung up the phone, I couldn't help but think of my dad. Mm-hmm. And like. He's our angel for this. It's insane. If Okay, think about this. If there really are angels out there and if our loved ones do watch over us after they pass, your dad seeing what we're doing, if he if he could do anything to help promote oh, he's, or bring he's he, crushing it. He's doing it for sure. Uh, yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like that to me um <laughs> is it, it's inevitable. He's, it, it's like, he is our, you, you know, you're like, if you, do you believe in angels? Like, no, I don't believe in angels the way that the Bible talks about these like beings with big feathery wings that are wearing a white tunic that blow trumpets that float on a cloud. I kind of believe that. But <laughs> we went and saw the flaming lips the other day. And in the song, do you realize the part of the lyrics are, do you realize that, the sun doesn't go down. It's just an illusion caused by the world spinning around. And it made me think, holy shit, that's the same with us. We're the sun. We don't ever really go down. It's an illusion caused by your body going away. And he's still here. Yeah. He's just non-local. Yeah. Our bodies keep us in a, uh, in a container in in a static position yeah, this is the, but this once is an experience machine yeah but once our bodies are released then we're well you're everywhere is released yeah like like that movie we were watching last night lucy oh yeah she, she became a computer yeah she turns into that everything such a term. Mm-hmm. it's really cool well, once uh, i like to think like that you you become otherworldly and you can do what you want multiple you worldly want and, yeah, yeah. You're outside of time Time is the thing. Yeah, so I totally believe that your dad would facilitate a phone call or a a hunch that turns into something or making us, you know, call somebody or, or, or have a certain interview that's going to change our trajectory for the for the good. Yeah. And and then this week is the Dick's weekend or week of fish four nights of fish in Denver and we're going and like we're going with Frasco and Todd Glass to their first show and Nick Gerlach and and our whole no simple road crew that's going and like I remember maybe four years ago you and I or five years ago you and I went to Dick's Mm -hmm. and it was just you and me and we were in the bleachers by ourselves Mm -hmm. and didn't know nobody and It was a blast, but so much has changed. Yeah. And, and, and that was one of my happiest fish memories. That was so fun. Like we were talking about our favorite, remember I was asking you the other day, like what's your favorite fish memory Mm -hmm. or fish experience and getting the tickets in the the shakedown. Yeah not realizing we, we were like, oh, we're not, we don't have tickets for today. We're not going to go. And then we get these tickets for like 30 bucks or something like that. And I just wept because it was, so, it was real in that moment. Like, Oh shit, this is a magical environment mm-hmm. and what you want and ask for can and will happen. And it has since then multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it just seems like, I was talking to uh, or texting with um, Long Strange Putt mm. the other day. Sean, shout out. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of days, brother. And uh, I was like, you know what, man, if you, because he's got some amazing shit going on over there too, like Long Strange Putt's on the come up. And uh, I was like, you know, man, if we step out of ourselves for a minute of just how busy we are of everything and take a look at what's going on. If we were to look back on this later, we're going to say that, that this was the come up for us. And, uh, I really do feel like that. Like I have a, a clarity that I haven't had in a very long time concerning no simple road. And another thing that you and I were just talking about up on the porch a little while ago, like you were like, I actually got nervous about our appearance at Ophelia's today. Mm-hmm. Normally, this close to an appearance this big, I would be internally a wreck. Like anxiety at a thousand percent worried about the fucking plane being late, 
all the what ifs, everything under the sun, blowing it up. And I feel so okay with every. I'm not one. I'm excited, really excited, but I'm not. I don't feel nervous anymore. I don't have that. It's not there. Well, I mean, you don't Yay. feel nervous for this. No, I don't feel that I, at, at all. Like the experience that I had at string cheese really stuck with me. You know, sometimes we have psychedelic experiences that like very, they're very profound in the moment and then they disappear over time. Dissipate. Like the, the, the profundity of it kind of just lessens over time. And then maybe you even forget and then you have to like revisit that space to have it happen again or whatever. This was not like that. It was like an impression that stayed. And it, it, I just like, I don't have to be nervous to be who I am. No, I don't, there's no pressure for me anymore. Like when it comes to that, I'm, we're not performing anything. I'm yeah. not. No, it's this be, isn't a, like a, a, a set. Of, and we have a good track record of doing really good. But it's not <laughs> even that. I mean, like, you know what if I, we didn't. Well, that's what keeps me calm. You know, it, when the nerves guy, it's like, well, when have we ever blown it? Or when you start getting those like, oh, my God, what if this happens? It's like that shit ain't never happened. Why are you doing that? Yeah. Look at what you've done. But just like, just to be able to damn go up there and just d- do this. <laughs> I yeah. can do. I can do this. We've done this over three hundred times. Yeah. I think I fucking got this by now. We were talking the other night after, um, <laughs> after uh, the Flaming Lips, and just realizing like we are, we're not a shtick. We are ourselves, and so going up and be perform or not performing, but going up and doing no simple road in front of an audience. It's we don't have to change who we are. And that to me is such a breath of fresh air because we talked about that and then we saw Wayne Coyne (laughs) and Wayne Coyne is, I mean, I think he's my new favorite person right now. After witnessing what he did on stage, because I've looked at their Instagram and, and this specific concert he's done multiple times. It's not like a jam band where it's a different show to each city. No, this is a show that they put on, but what he did was a mix between a performer, a musician and your buddy talking to you. And he will sit there and, and, and explain the song like, okay, you know, I wrote a song about LSD and he goes into the story and then he's like, all right guys, you're in for a treat. And then boom, he starts with the performance and I've not seen that very often. I've not seen through all the concerts that we go to where somebody quote unquote breaks character to talk and then comes back on and kills it with that same he was, genuineness and the fervor yeah. and that like musicianship and then goes right back out of it. And it's like, Oh dude, it's beautiful here. What a great night. You know, like, He is the perfect balance between completely being yourself and being a performer. Yeah. And, and having a stage presence and a persona that's real. Mm -hmm. And, and even though he's not a fucking flower, he pulls it off. (laughs) Oh, he totally pulls (laughs) it off. He pulls it off. And so we we had been talking about being yourself like, like this past week, like you, like we've mentioned a couple times, we had Christian Lopez and um, Haley Johnson on two separate people on two separate episodes that are coming up. And we ended up talking to them both about being real in this industry and how challenging that could be because, you know, maybe producers or, or management wants you to be a little bit more sexy or more singy or more or different. Or more fuckable. Yeah, whatever the case is. And then, Ew. so you got to have to kind of like put that into your art. And so it had been kind of like a, a, a common, thread. common thread that we were, we had been talking about. And then seeing Wayne Coyne being a, the perfect blend of all of those things, it made me more comfortable with what 
I slash we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a trip to be passionate about something and start doing something because just because you like it and then it starts to grow. And at first I was really wanting like pushing hard for no simple road. I would struggle with it and push against it and fight it and try and shove it along and get frustrated and then get sad and it's not growing fast enough. And why haven't I quit my job and it's not supporting all this shit that would go on in my head. And I just feel like I finally come to a place where I've let go of all of that. I kind of just like, I'm letting it happen. I'm not, I'm doing my work that I'm supposed to do the best that I can all the time. And I've just kind of opened my hands up and let go. Those expectations you've released and And, it's the most beautiful thing. As soon as I did that, everything started to happen. And I remember this is (laughs) Luke from our (coughs) breath collective. I've been meeting with him every Wednesday for the past like two and a half months. And when in, I've probably talked about this on the show before, but when I m- finally got the courage to ask him to coach me, we were at the Hollywood Bowl and and I told him like, hey man, I'm like, we've got this show and, and there's this community around it and like, I don't want to carry any of my baggage into that. I want to put down my shit and be able to do this like clean. And he said, hey, man, I'm going to show you how to just let go and release into it and and everything will just come. And he was fucking dead on. Thank you. It was not like that was not a sales pitch or a come on or, or some like high minded bullshit spiritual ideal that I had to like get get pay a certain amount of money to attain or reach some degree or initiate any of that crap it was like i'm gonna show you how to just be yourself and then everything will happen that's supposed to happen you don't gotta fucking worry about it and it's only been a couple of months man and the fruit of it is huge i've noticed it and for uh, sure it just feels really good to be in that place and and when <clears throat> We're ourselves, obviously, and and we know how we are. If you're paying attention to yourself, you know what your reactions are in situations. You know how your head works and what your habits are and what your predilections and tendencies are towards things. And when you yourself surprise yourself with how you're being for the good, you know what I mean? Like, whoa. I realize I'm not doing that thing that I always do. That's huge. Absolutely. And it's, and it wasn't through like any kind of, um, struggling to, to do that. Like I, you know, 21 days to change a habit and, you know, tap your head and rub your belly for four hours each day. Well, that would be the same thing that you were doing before (laughs) more expectation. You know, you just said Luke was teaching you how to let go or, has taught you how to let go. And so boom, there it is. That's what it looks like in action. I mean, Apple, you've, you've started talking to him now too. I mean, do you, do you yeah, get I what I, I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I, immediately. Well, the first time was a little weird and then I, I've only done it two times and then I do, would do another one Monday morning. But like I told you that, especially this last one, the like eyes closed the whole time and doing breathing and he's, there's like some questions and like like a little bit of guidance and stuff, but I the hour went by so quick. I, I like was in the zone. The hour was over. He's like, okay, this is the last part, and I'm like, what? And I was so relaxed that day. It was it was last Monday, and that's my day off now with work. And usually I still do. I I I couldn't I couldn't do anything work related. Everything everything was focused on me, like calm down and being relaxed and yeah it's it's amazing i can't wait to get deeper and i'm thankful to that because i'm kind of the same way as aaron is like 
a little skeptical of stuff. There's so much bullshit nowadays and so many people trying to sell something. Like, to obtain this, it's going to, you're going to have to go to these classes for six months and it's going to cost this much money and then you'll attain enlightenment. This is completely different. This is a brother that we love and loves us and wants to help. And it's just, it's amazing already. Just a couple, a couple of times doing it. Yeah. And it's just going to get better. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> I always used to like trip out on people like Frasco or um, Trey or just insert musician or performer here. Like the, the true badasses. like, how are they such a badass and still just chill? Like hey, how how does that work? And, and I get it. Yeah. I totally yeah. get it. Like you're just resting in yourself. And that's what people are picking up on. And it it's not trying to do anything. You're not trying to like Well, that's when stuff can channel and you when you're open and the organic flow of things, the flow state. Well, and and if you're even the least bit um empathic you pick up on people's anxiety about themselves of their uncomfortability and their their non-connectedness and they're like not in the moment with you and do you remember you know prior to luke and we would go to shows and i would like almost completely avoid you the entire first set set and before then it's exactly what you're saying you're emp- i'm empathic and i'm feeling this anxiety and it's like when somebody spits when they talk it's like getting on top of you <laughs> yeah, i can't totally get i it. can't stand in and front of you yeah so i'm not like gonna set i'll be behind you i'll be over yeah, there no, it. and it was a real struggle for me for a long time and that's a lot of times why we ever had any kind of beef during shows or leading up to it or whatever it was like I did not like being around you because it was such a the f- the frequency was so far from mine and so off that I I needed my space. You I know, get it, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. He wait till later till he was Absolutely. in till everything dropped and he was in the zone and having yeah, fun. It, and then it, it was like, okay, yeah. Now, now we can play. Now you can. And be that my happens friend. really quick now. <laughs> like that, that, those those pre show jitters and that anxiety of everything. I, I, I don't get that anymore when we go to shows. Haven't for a while. Mm-mm. No, it's not the same same game anymore. And it yeah, shows her home. And <laughs> aside from all of that, like I'm having fun. <laughs> like this shit's fun, man. We're so lucky to get to do this. Yeah, we really are. We're so lucky. Like, wow. <laughs> How grateful to g- we're at home. Like we get to do Monday rewind and people are listening to it. Like, Digging it. Yeah. What? Thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> calling in like sweet angel heart, David to remind me that it's okay to feel un and that we all feel like that. Like getting, getting positive messages and it, it for him, it moved him that much to call to try to make me feel better and let me know that he's with me and share in his experience. And it wasn't just David. It was like Nathaniel. He reached out to me and made me feel so much better. Like sent me that video of me running down red rocks mm-hmm. with freaking that. So y- like it, it pay- Barracuda playing. It, in the yeah. Background. It pays <laughs> so much. Like what we do is paying us so much in so many ways that are beyond financial yeah it's yeah that is a lot of the payment we get with the friends and family everything that's been built out of this and it's it's like all pervasive too like i said something at work today that i don't know if i've ever i'm trying to think i don't think i've ever said what i said to my boss today at work i we were talking about like some stupid shit that happened with departments and corporate America, blah, 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 whatever. And, uh, I was like, you know what? I love working here. 
I, I love working with you guys. Whoa. Was your, bo- <laughs> what, what was your boss like, what? what? His Kevin, eyes open up Kevin like 50 looked at me times. And he's like, you're not getting a raise. He comes over, takes he's, your temperature. And, like, and, and I was like, he, he's like, you're not getting a raise. And I was like, I'm, I, I don't care. I'm serious. I'm like, used to that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I'm not saying it for that, dude. Like it, this has, has gotten into all the corners for me. Like I'm cool with whatever right now. It's, it's fine. And I do. I do love working there. It, it has, it's afforded me the ability to do what I'm doing right now. Man, I've been saying that shit I know. To you. I, babe, look, been, been I think it. if you talk to 10 married women out there that have been married to their guy for at least a year or more, they're waiting for their dude to catch up too. What's up, everybody? If you're like me and you're trying to do better for yourself and what you eat in this new year, I have something really cool for you. Factors delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day way easier. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You're going to have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. What are you waiting for? Sign up and save. They've done all the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So here's what you got to do. Head to factormeals.com slash no simple road 50 and use the code no simple road 50 to get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots per box while subscription is active. That's code no simple road 50 at factormeals.com. Take all the guesswork out of trying to do the right thing for your body. Fuel up easy and fast. Go check out factor. And I don't even feel like it's catch up. <laughs> I, I don't I feel like it's, it, I don't feel like it's catch up. I feel like, you know, if, if you know something and you know it for a long time and you see it, somebody finally says what's up or maybe they don't say what's up, but they just start acting like they know what's up. Sometimes you need that. Okay. I like, you need to know that you not, not just that it, you were right, but that you see what, like what was happening because that right there makes you feel like you're not fucking crazy. Cause if you have a lead on somebody, just say it's a race, you have a lead and you're seeing the waterfall and the person is not nowhere near the waterfall. You trying to talk that person into saying that they don't fucking get it. They don't understand. There ain't no waterfall. They There's seen it exactly. Yet. And so you're feeling like crazy. Like, did I just see the waterfall? Like, was that, is that in my own head? And that's what it is. It's not necessarily about babe. You were right. It's not about that. It's about like, fuck finally like yes i'm not crazy you you see it too now Mm -hmm. and that's how i feel about it i don't care about right or wrong i care about the result i care about what happens yeah yeah it's just cool to feel like that like you know what it's fine no simple road is going to take care of us when it takes care of us that is such a relief to hear you say that out loud and and it will it fucking it on, on an emotional level, it already is. Yeah, yeah no, I'm talking is. about financially. Yeah. I, I'm saying it'll do what it's supposed to do when it's supposed to do it. Yep. And not one second before and not one second after. And it's you gonna, can't, can't force it. Nope. All good things and all good time, man. And you know what? It's totally fine. And and as it stands right now, I do whatever the fuck I want anyway. So, you, and I get and paid for it. been doing it. Yeah. So, right on. Job in the daytime. Good for you. And, hey people that I work with are actually like we have like business partners that do work for us subcontractors and one of these subcontractors happens to live in Denver and he's like the the head of this big company that does stuff for us and he we were on a meeting a few weeks ago and he was like oh you're gonna be in Denver on in in August and I was like yeah I'm gonna do this thing with our podcast and he's like I'm coming man so oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I got business people coming to watch us do our thing. And like we've, you know what? All of us to some degree have had people supporting us. It, well, like when Apple worked at Define, 
Oh, we yeah. had they were, our they were our sponsor for years and years. They let us borrow their their ten by. You know, they let them leave early. You know, I've had plenty of friends that showed up to different things and and supported us. You have had people when we were at Oregon Country Fair. I was going to say my beautiful coworkers yeah, showed up at Oregon like, Country like Fair. We've been and getting, they all listen to the show now. Ugh, those sweet angel yeah, yeah. heart women. Those. Every single one of those women that showed up for you, I am a champion for. I love, I love them so much. I have, when I look back at the Oregon Country Fair pictures and see them, I smile inside and out just remembering the time that we had with them. Yeah, she she asked me today. She was like, "So when when are you guys doing your next live event? Because we all want to come." I was like, oh, shit, Hell well, we're yeah. doing it next Wednesday, and you can watch on volume.com. <laughs> but we're, I said, we're working on some stuff here locally, too. So we got to get some some local love going for the live podcast. Yeah. That's, that's definitely in the cards for us. Yeah, and those things are starting to fall together, too, as we go out and go to shows and meet people. And Are we talking about? Uh, we can talk about it. All right. So I mean, nothing happened. So no, I mean, this it. past um, Tuesday night. Yeah, it we, was Tuesday. We all Aaron Apple, myself and and I was going to say you twice. Um, the three of us went to go see Flaming Lips at in downtown Portland um, at Pioneer Square as they're part of their summer concert series. And for like I said, first time we've all seen Flaming Lips and it was my top three concerts that I've ever seen. It, and I think it will stay there. I think that there's nothing that can really change that because of, first <laughs> Until of all, the first night of fish. All right. Well, fish is in my top. Like I'll fish just, is already up yeah, there. fish is in the top three. It's Radiohead, flaming lips and fish. So okay. fish is, they can, it's, Fishes the concert can change whichever one. It I doesn't it. matter, yeah, but yeah, there's, they're, they're going to stay in the top three, but it, it was a mix of the weather that night. It was perfect. It was a mix of the people that we were around. And it was the band that was so incredible that it was, I don't even really know how to explain what happened. I do. You go, you go. I mean, I mean, from my perspective, because there was so much things that happened, like insights, um, feelings, um, connections. I was telling Aaron, like, it was like, I realized that that night was a dream come true for me. The, in, like the whole night. Why? And there was a, a lot of things. I remember being a, a teenage mom and I remember like Lollapalooza and all these awesome festivals that were the Free Tibet concert. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers was huge. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, all of these bands. And then, of course, the whole Pacific Northwest grunge era. And I was a mom and I could not participate in any of that shit. First of all, I couldn't afford it. Second of all, there was no way that somebody was going to be able to watch my kid to do that. A lot of stuff was outside of Vegas that didn't happen. And it was always something that I wanted to be part of. I always wanted to go to Lollapalooza. It was like a huge thing for me because it was like always the best bands. And I just, it was a, it was a wanting for me. And like MTV was huge back then and being a VJ and like, I just, it, it was something that was on my radar. It was something that I always wanted and that, flaming lips night was I, I realized that when we got home I mean it was dawning on me during the concert yeah, you said something about it during the show yeah it was definitely dawning on me during the concert but like I'd always wanted to be in the Pacific Northwest to f around this kind of music and then I everything from what I was wearing to the music that was played Flaming Lips did a version of Madonna's Borderline. <laughs> and awesome. when I was, a, I mean, a kid, not a teenager, but I was a child, like, you know, seven, eight, whenever Madonna's Borderline came out, I just remember dancing around the house and singing that. And like, it was my favorite song. I loved the muscle t-shirt that she was wearing. I loved like that whole like vibe that Madonna had back then and just remembering how much 
music like turned me on into like I loved it and being there at Flaming Lips and hearing him sing that specific song with like I said the night like it was I know that this is silly but just even wearing my Doc Martens and Sydney and Adam bought me those Doc Martens and the certain Levi's that I had on it was like everything that I like I couldn't afford back then that I really wanted it was happening that night you were six when borderline came out so I was six dancing around to borderline loving it like knowing all the words and like into it so like at the end of the night when we were finally home it was like kind of watching this like movie of like when I was little and then a teenager and then flat now and like oh shit these all these things that I had been desperately wanting or or kind of like wishing inside my heart didn't really tell anybody but these are like things that you want and I was like it's tonight tonight's the night I'm getting all of this my dreams come true and I it was like a satiating internal feeling like you don't want that anymore because you have it, you know, like I want a Tesla. I want a Tesla. And then you walk out in your garage and there's your Tesla. Like it felt like that to me. I like something I had been wanting inside my body it's, for so long. And then the night came and now that feeling is gone because you had it. It's so funny because, um, Preston. Yeah. Light and Matthew McDonald. Oh, I thought about Matthew both. all night hit us up before going to the show. Preston was like, Oh my God, you guys have never seen flaming lips. You're going to fucking love it. And then Matthew had said, Oh, this is your first flaming lips show. Everything's going to be different tomorrow. And they, they, they couldn't have been more spot on. And you said, you know, about what they did. They created a container in that place in a really special kind of a way, a very safe, fun, weird, silly, serious container that allowed everybody to connect with everybody around them safely and deeply. And they've done it so many times. They're, they're experts at at what they, he was the ringmaster, how they allow everybody to figure out, to connect with each other inside that space. And it's dope. Well, the thing I love about that night too, is we go, we go to flaming lips and I'm asking Aaron, I'm, I was like, who's meeting us there? Is it like our normal crew? Yeah. We usually have uh, a people. bunch of people. No, no, but everybody was busy doing things, whatever. So our normal crew, we weren't hooking up with anybody. So really. it was just the three of us. So yeah. So we roll in there and then one of my good friends from the cannabis industry, Joe, uh, which I haven't seen in a bit. Well, at least I haven't seen him since, I don't know, beginning of the year. Uh, and we walk in and we walk down on floor and there's Joe with his girl Willow. Like center, never, center stage. Like, yeah, like, like come over here. Like we didn't know where we were going to go, where we we're going to hang out and then stop, chatted with them for a few minutes and then ended up hanging out with them the entire time. And then Blake came over and like it, that, that to me was so cool because I've been, been wanting to hang out with joe more for a long time and now that's going to happen it kind of got more solidified and stuff we're going to hang out there's more thing he's a big supporter of the podcast always has been and it was just cool to see him and like the people we ended up hanging out with and the whole night was i remember afterwards it was like i felt like like a like a kid like so happy like that part of your childhood that's like the best like you, like you, you got the, you got everything you wanted from the ice cream truck. You got to go to the circus. <laughs> yes, you got Apple, fucking, yes. you, 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 you got all the, all the merch you want. You know, you, you like, you're just got everything you wanted. You're so fulfilled. And then like everything that Wayne, the way he had, like you said, like a ring man, he was like an MC, a ring master Beetlejuice. and a performer. And he just personifies that his look, the way he carries himself and speaks. He's, like royalty Uh, yes and okay when somebody can be so different he comes out like a fucking rock star first of all when the the first minute he comes out he's a rock star he's got his freaking like black outfit on suit leather looking dope yep his leather harness and then 
you know, an hour into the show, he's got a fucking flower on his head. And there is nobody that I can respect. Wonder Woman costume. I never yeah, can respect somebody more when they can be that serious <laughs> and that silly. That shows that you're so comfortable with yourself that you went like, I'm not going to wear a dress. Why the fuck not? Just put it on and see what you look like. I'm not going to shave my, like, who fucking cares? Just do it. And that's like. If you feel it. Well, if it, if it's right. He did yeah, everything that right. was right. Yeah. He did everything that was right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, he did, for example, this was my favorite part of the show. He was like, there's a lot of people I want to thank you for being here tonight because you have every reason to be sad, but you didn't stay home. You got up and you came here to share and you have every right to be sad. There's a lot of sad things happening in this world. And then we sang a fucking sad song together to help elevate those people that were there. And we did it twice. It was two separate times Mm -hmm. that he purposely brought up sadness and didn't just skate over it and didn't minimize it. Like it was like, no, yeah, we're going to into it. Yeah. We're going to take yeah, we some time and, yeah. and work through this as a group, send that good energy out there. And like, I felt something happen, like mm-hmm. in me, I felt a release of goodness. And, and like, I felt like we did do something. I well, felt like it was like a real change and real like energy that was like, that's what I always think of. Like we're at a festival, everybody's like dancing hard and so happy. And then in the moment of all this energy to get people to do something together. And that's what he did. Like when we saw goose and they had to stop and do Wim Hof. Breathing. Yes, absolutely. Ah. Just like that. Yeah. And well, I need to say like the way you dress that to like, he sent every, everybody walked out of there with their cup overflowing absolutely. to flow out into the world. And not to mention, like he said, that he's like the, this, what is happening right now is one of the most important things that's happening on this planet. These, these congregating and bringing people together and getting out and bringing the love together that it it's what a show you know I, I don't know if it's just m- my perspective but whatever to me that's that's a master magician that's a master magician at work creating real magic that other people are taking part in whether it's wittingly or unwittingly he had there was sigils everywhere so that was one of the right, right off the bat if you know even a tiny bit about magic and then you see these identifying sigils you realize that there's some shit going down right now <laughs> like yeah. this like is not cr- just like merch oh yeah. yeah this is not just merch this is um a specific uniform to have a certain portals open mm-hmm. and that is exactly what happened. There was a portal of love that opened in the middle of downtown Portland. And then it got closed up by a wonderful world. That's they how we ended. My, my, what a wonderful world is like, if you ask me, Aaron, what is your favorite song ever? What a wonderful world is my absolute all time favorite song. When I die, I want that song played at my funeral. Like that song. And Flaming Lips close every show with that song. Like it was this the level of synchronicity that night too, like just bumping into everybody. Like when we were talking to Joe, um, Apple's friend well, our friend Joe, but like we were talking to Joe and he was like, Oh yeah, you guys, you know, you need to meet him meet this guy. Boom, guy walks up. Oh yeah, that Santa Claus dude, blah blah blah. Boom, Santa Claus walks up. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I want to introduce you to the, you know, the sound guy over here. Oh, here Boom, he is. there he is. I mean, and it happened too. I had a coworker that was gonna come to the show and I didn't see her the entire show. And then the next thing you know, I'm talking about her to this new woman that we had just Joe's girlfriend that we just met. Boom, turn around and the girl's right behind me. Like all of these synchronicities kept on happening the entire night. And it just, even the Uber ride home was the most oh, pleasant, was, cool. was the most pleasant drive home. And again, it was like, a, it was a dream come true night for me for a million reasons. But like my childhood, like desire had come true. And I don't know how often that happens for people or what, but 
it happened to me and it fucking was better than orgasm. Wow. It was. All right. That's all I can say about it. I got work I mean, to do then. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. That's how you're figuring, just like, oh, what? <laughs> No okay. more flaming lips for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was no. It was just everything. It was the. It was yeah. Everything. It was the entire night. It was night. the night. It was. It was that Vinny. The, there's something special when they play down in Pioneer Square in the middle in the heart of downtown yeah. Portland. That's a trip. Like when he was talking about the bird, when he, oh that mechanical gosh. bird. But then after he threw that, then all those birds took flight downtown. Right behind the it's stage. like yeah, they took off from the trees behind the stage. Everybody's like. <gasps> Look at the Look. birds. Yeah, that was magic. Yeah, man. I Just go to our Instagram, and I made a reel of the show, and it'll give you some idea of the level of uh, uh, hullabaloo that they produce. And, and, I, and, and I, want, oh, I want Wayne Coyne on this show. Yeah. It also made me realize, like, again, I love picking up trash after the show. You're so funny. And... I also like leaving last after a show. Yeah, so those are my out. favorite two things to do after a show is loiter and pick up trash. <laughs> <laughs> loiter until you get kicked out. Yep. And so I see this security guard like struggling with this, like, you know, the plastic bag to start picking up stuff. And the security guard is picking up trash. So I start talking to him. I'm like, I'll help you out. He's like, okay. So I'm like, I go, you just got to hold the bag and I'll pick up. And so he, we're doing that. And I was like, did you enjoy the show? He was like, man, I wish I could have seen more. But in order for you all to have a good time, because he was like, did you have a good time? And I said, yes. And then I asked him, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but in order for you guys to have a good time, I, there's a lot of dumb shit that we got to deal with on the back end. So I did my job if you had a good time. And I was like, dude, thank you so much, man. Because you don't know how much of a good time I just had. He was like, yeah, it looked like an awesome time. And so we're sitting, picking up trash, this, that, and the other. And I just was so grateful. <laughs> like I was, my heart was overflowed picking up trash. After. I felt like it was like the least I could do. You know, to, to juxtapose all of what we're talking about, we walk out of the show. They kicked us out. Oh my by the way. gosh! They were like, "It's time for you, motherfucker." Yeah, they, yeah that same you, security you, guard was out. like, you, "You need to fucking leave." Yeah. We're done. They, we go the home. same security guy was like, "All right, yeah, girl, get out of here." So we walk out onto the street next to Pioneer Square, and it was like walking into a fentanyl house. The Walking Dead, yeah. for reals, for reals. There was a couple like right outside the gate, like going through their luggage luggage on literally the, on the sidewalk there was a guy laid out on his back doing the worm in in piss there was it, it was crazy that guy down the street offered a suicide whatever that oh, is yeah. <laughs> y'all want suicide you, you want some suicide i, like, I didn't no, like no i'm, I'm, I'm trying to lay off then, the suicide then the train we took the train down and the train like it was stopped there was like there was seven cops cop cars blocking the train tape, track police yeah. tape and vehicles all down that street it was like the train can't the come train can't come through a, no, a cop car it, it was pretty intense and it was such a weird juxtaposition of life and everything. We we just had this like mountaintop experience of love and connection and happiness and family and joy and sadness and fun. And then we walk out and it was like, holy shit. Right into the Reality. sadness like yeah. he was talking right about. Right here, man. And we were talking to Willow and Joe like around the corner from where the train was and this homeless brother walked up and I looked in his eyes and I saw myself that, like 25 years ago. That guy you gave money to? Yeah. And he was like, can I have a cigarette? I was like, I tell you what I'm going to do. I go, I'm going to give you like five cigarettes so that you don't have to ask anybody for a little while. And I'm going to give you some money so that you can get something to eat and get some dope. Does that sound good? <laughs> and he just like looked at me stunned. Like, like what? Like you're speaking to me like I'm a human being. What the fuck? And I, I gave him some money 
and he just like looked at the money in his hand like it was on fire and i was like look that's a lot of money you need to put that in your pocket don't just drop it put it in your pocket and go take care of yourself and he was like oh okay and like he was out of shoved it. the money in his pocket and wandered off but point is i looked in that cat's eyes and i saw myself 27 years ago and was like holy shit i am fucking blessed holy shit like <laughs> we yeah, paid that shit forward Ugh. scene yeah man reality's a trip especially when you're you know and portland's gnarly right now you know like I had a coworker who said that they had some people visiting in town and they just really wanted to stay in the city. They were like, no, you can stay with us. And they're like, no, 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 we want to be downtown. Mm. We want to hang out. They can only hang for two nights. They had a whole week here and they could only hang for two nights downtown because they were so afraid walking around and just in awe of how ever, far it's come. Uh, yeah. And they just couldn't believe it. And so they couldn't bring themselves to stay any longer. That's and too bad. It is too bad, but it's the reality of it. Yeah. I was actually thinking about that the other day. Like when we came through here in 2012 on our way up and back to Seattle, Portland was magical downtown. It was it, spotless. It was pristine and wonderful and spotless and fun and yeah, cute. We saw human shit and right heady. at the entrance of the yeah. venue. And then... um even when we got here in 16, it was still oh yeah fun and, and rad. And one every well, I think all towns experienced that. Like like every shop was bustling. There was restaurants and like so many restaurants and shops closed down through COVID and, and after COVID. There's but still stuff boarded up. And I thought weird. the other day I was like, you know, that kind of sucks. Like getting somewhere right at the end of its coolness. You know, I, I would have liked to experience that for a little while longer here. And I it's still there. The charm is still there. Mm -hmm. It's just like there's an it's edge sick. down there. Now. I, you yeah, know, it's it, sick. That's a good thing. The thing is, is it. that like it's not just Portland though. It's the, everywhere, the everywhere. United States is sick. And there's a lot going on that people don't give a shit about. Or and that we can't really do anything about. Either way. You know, because there's billions and billions of dollars that we can be in debt and that we can give to wars and shit. But what about what's happening locally? And so all of that stuff, we're, if you're participating in your city, you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a trip. And, you know, Portland has become uh, a bit of a meme itself like we're a, oh, a yeah. stereotype mm -hmm. you know and and that's too bad you know it used to be well, very heady. has with no. the weird keeping portland weird but and it like, used to be like kind of a weird heady avant-garde place it wasn't a step in human shit and scream at the wall place it was not that and it it i think that I, you know what it, i really do feel like we are going to see a turnaround i think that it, it Definitely has a potential. Everything to. has ebb and flow, and what well, we like we we're just talking. We've seen it improve a lot. Yeah, it has improved since from, from what it was. But walking out of that show, yeah, was like at that hour. Oh, these shit balls, man! The you know we're keeping it weird in Portland on another fucking level now. <laughs> it's well, a, and I'm, I'm sure too when thing. like when like those are going on down at Pioneer Square, that kind of brings people. Oh yeah, it. that's true. Because they know there's going to be thousands of people walking out of there, and it's yeah. a good place to you know panhandle, busk, do whatever you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I I would have done the same thing. <laughs> yeah, catch a yeah, free show. Yeah, like, I've been like, cash. well, this it's dead over here. I'm going down there where yeah. all these people are going to be happy and coming out. And all right, so. We just want to say thank you to Wayne Coin and the yes. Flaming Lips for creating a Zach. container for all of us, <laughs> Steven, all of us to, Miles. to connect with each other and and share a little love and sadness together. And one it was other beautiful. One other really cool thing that happened there was, you know, I'm 44 years old. 
I have two tattoos. Never cared to get another one. Don't even, I would always, my, my thought was like, I don't know what I want on my body that much. I don't care about that. And I met Willow and I decided, I'm decided I'm getting a tattoo. I, there it is. That was here first. Yeah. Stay tuned. Her work is cool. It's like soft and she's uh, amazing. Dainty. Yeah. Um, okay. Before we, we got like five minutes left of what? Of the show. How do you know? Because I can see the the timer. Are you timing it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, why not six? Yeah. Why you okay. got a schedule? Okay, seven minutes. Why not three? Yeah. Four. Anyway, seven. What we're gonna Ten. do is we're gonna say Let's draw a number. One thing that we're looking forward to at Dicks the most, not Ophelia's, Dicks. What Dicks do you want the most? <laughs> Big ones. They all better be fucking burners, or I'm done. No <laughs> fish. <laughs> well, what I I'm I'm like picking something. I just come on. Just, I, just I'm for looking. Funsies. I'm looking forward to steam. How do you know I you're getting my the steam? steam? It's four nights of fish. There better be a steam in there. What to throw breadcrumbs off the ledge? <laughs> snare my nostrils and blow steam all right i thought you would say eating at ophelia's or eating he at said dicks though no, 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 that's, no, true. Lady, that's true that's not he he, he nixed yeah, the rest of it nix. like, well I mean, we're gonna dicks. be there for four days we're not gonna be at the venue for I, okay what i'm looking forward to the most hours. is the people we end up hanging out with going with sean and getting to see luke and who else does Nathaniel making it again? Or I don't no? think so. I haven't heard from okay. him. But that, that, that probably is what I'm looking forward to the most over the music. Everything is, is connecting again with yeah. people. I mean, I, I have to agree with that. I, you know what? Being there with Dan, that's, that's what I'm looking forward oh, to the yeah. most. Taking Dan I, to his first show. Well, j- taking him to his first show, but like Dan is such a special person to me hanging out with my daughter's friends and he's such a huge part of our family he's Ah. he's done a huge part of nsr he is he's done so much for nsr he's done so much for my baby he's done so much for adam like he is our family photographer our family like uncle cousin brother our family eskimo when he comes up here in the winter man. and <laughs> Hell yeah. and and he he gets what we're doing he he listens to the show and to be able to have him uh, like do something big with us like at Ophelia's and then to go you know he he did a lot to to get here to to do this he's been traveling quite a bit and it came out of his pocket came out of his pocket and he is doing this for the love of it and i i i'm so excited i'm so excited to share uh, like the no simple road family with him i'm so excited to like just see his face when he sees fish and what turn on moment it's going to be for him and yeah man like see him dance just being (laughs) just being with like like apple said with the no simple road family like everybody that we get to be around and hopefully we're going to see grant um and Allie again grant livingston and Allie. so yeah it's it's like a homecoming and i'm excited about that yeah it's gonna be dope um you know we've we've only gone together all. all three of us a couple of times once once you've only done dicks once right yeah yeah when we stayed at woolies okay yeah i'm yeah you guys went the first year and then i went and then i didn't get to go last year and then this will be the fourth i'm I'm stoked for the three of us to be at dicks together like it's always fun when you and i go it's dope but to be able to experience together as no simple road that's always special in its own way you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And especially this year because of Ophelia's and because Dan and because we be with Long Strange Putt and Frasco and blah, blah, all of it. I mean, like, that's hard, too, because it's going to be so fun with Frasco. Like, that's what I mean. The people like you're right, Apple, the people that we get to be there with is really the 
icing on the cake. And it's what creates the experiences that we're going to treasure and bring home with us, besides fish being the soundtrack to the entire thing. And if we're we're, um, wishing for songs, I'm going to wish for my same song I always wish for. I wish for a wedge because I want to build you all a pyramid. And uh, yeah. And And maybe a well. I love howling. So anytime that they play that, I'm down for it. I'm all over it. Look, y'all, everybody knows if y'all listen to the show, you know, I love 2001. You know, I love first tube, but the howling is when they fucking rip on that song. Listen to the one on Halloween. That version 2021 is so sick. And why? Because it's different than they've ever done it. I've, I've, I, I love, um, live fish. You've done a study of the howling. Well, I was doing one the other day. Yes, I was. Did I listen to all of them? No, but I listened to at least five of them. Okay. And I wasn't asking facetiously. No, I I know. Okay. I, I, I unwittingly (laughs) did it because I was like, I want to listen to the howling. And then I was like, oh, okay. Let me listen to the one that I think I heard first, which was on Halloween. And I was like, oh my God, I don't remember it like this, but I loved it. And then I was like, oh, well, let me look at this one that, and I love that one almost as much. But then I listened to a third and a fourth and I was like, they've never, this is, and, this was special when and they you did schooled that. schooled me on some fish facts Well, the other wait day. a minute. I think I was wrong about that. So oh. don't, don't quote me because okay. it was out of turn, like some, like it was in September, 2022. But yeah, that's but Halloween exactly, and so I I was, I was wrong. Part, the howling was yes, part of. I was wrong. Soldier. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. No, I I was wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, look, I don't know what happened, but it did. Just oh, now. a lot happened. Okay. We shared our feelings about how dope Wayne Coin is. We shared our excitement about Ophelia's and being with Andy Frasco. We talked about how you feel accomplished and as you should, as you should. And we talked about all kinds of good stuff. So we hope that we brought you a little bit of love and excitement. And I hope that whoever's listening to this, if you're going to Dick's, please come say hi. If you see us, we're not too busy I don't care who we're talking to. You're just as important as who we're talking to. Absolutely. Absolutely. I say, and we are always talking. So even if we were talking yeah. to other people or each other, <laughs> that is just what we do. You can interrupt. Come if, up even and if Aaron and talk. I are making out, just interrupt, you know, push our shoulder. Be like, hey, what's up? You told me to say hi. It's all like, oh, about. Hey, what's up? <laughs> um, yeah. Go to nosimpleroad.com. Get your tickets for the show. Your merch. If you can't, then go to volume.com on Wednesday night and watch the stream and uh, everybody travel safe on your way out to, to Denver this week. And uh, you know, leave, leave a little extra early just in case. One more thing too. If you haven't go back and listen to the Chris Pandolfi episode with no simple road, do that before you come. Mel gave you homework. Second, Listen to Chris Pandolfi's Inside the Musician's Brain. He is doing some really incredible interviews there. He's so thoughtful and so prepared with how he does these interviews that it's amazing to me. Like he he does these interviews the same way he plays the banjo. And the Mike Gordon episode is a great one to listen to yes. while you're traveling on your way to Dick's. So yeah, show um, Chris Pandolfi some love, um, you know, listening to his podcast inside the musician's brain and, and our episode with him and uh, come see us at a Dick's. And we will or be back Ophelia's. on Friday with another No Simple Road Not episode. episode. And uh, until then, travel safe, smile at a stranger, safety third, hydrate. And uh, got our SOs. Who's got our SOs? Because they're TOS. (laughs) And try something new this week. Yeah. We love you guys. Peace. Family needs to spend the first
scanning is a focus through the spot in the corner that is still intact. The react is both a defense mechanism as well as a fear. We've traveled this road before, so we may think. But it's a tad bit of strange similarity that feed an A equal A complex. The fears of your past do not equal the perplexities of the current road. What's up, everyone? It's Joe, and I'm the host of That's Awesome with Joe, a podcast on the newly formed Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. I talk with tons of your favorite artists, managers, touring personnel, and more. Most of the time we talk about music, but lots of the time we end up talking about something completely unrelated. We laugh a lot. We do a lot of really stupid things, but also some things that are really informative and interesting. Basically, it's a podcast that I think you should listen to. Obviously, I'm biased because it's my podcast, but I think I might be into it if I wasn't the host. Check it out at SoundTalentMedia.com.